HMOs and how to make even more money from them by including en suites. Is it worth it? What do you need to consider when putting en suites into your property? Check out this video from the Property Expert panel. Um, Ipsits asks the question, I am just a newbie renovating my first property. We've all been there. Don't worry, we've made lots of mistakes. I've put foot, uh, feet through ceilings, broken gas pipes and walls, you name it, I've done a few things. Um, and what they're doing here is renovating this uh, property to a four bedroom, all en suite. Now that's gonna be an interesting one for you, Ross, to go into in a second. But currently there is a combi board in the property which needs to be replaced as it wouldn't support four en suites. I'm gonna re-emphasize that, four en suites. Um, I was planning to put electric shower in one of the en suites. For the remaining three en suites, I am a bit confused whether to use a mega flow system. I do love these terminologies, mega flow. Um, I should do an advert. We should get uh, some actor to do that one better than me. Um, so, and with that, he says here, with a system boiler or just a large storage combi boiler, such a, as, as a Weissman 222F, that's what sounds like a Jaguar. Um, Ross, that's a lot of detail, but uh, what's your thoughts on that? And I know that uh, Simon, you are going to come on, on board with mortgages a little later, but Ross, is this a good idea for en suites? Yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with it. And you can get a system that will accommodate that. Um, All right, thanks for that. That's there, there's, a cost. there's a cost. <laughs> um, I mean, well, look, en suites in, a, on, uh, in an HMO are, are what people want. And we're trying to provide things that what that people want. So um, absolutely get your, your four. I mean, I, I did a, a small-ish um, bed sit, um, eight bed sits, and every single shower has, um, has a pumped hot water system. A um, couple of things to remember. If you're going to go down the electric shower route, your water pressure. You have to have a brake tank. So your water pressure is going to be a problem. You'll need to boost that in some way. Um, if you've got a really good plumber on board, then definitely the mega flow, or should I say mega flow, um, is, is the way to go. <clears throat> uh, high efficiency. Make sure your boiler's high efficiency. Make sure it's ready and been sized to cope with the demand. If you speak to, if your plumber's not capable of doing it, then speak to one of the manufacturers. They'll quite happily size it for you. Um, but water pressure will be your problem. And, and again, I don't know the type of property you're looking at. You're going to need a decent amount of, of water storage and you're going to need a decent amount of pressure. Um, and again, I could talk all day on that. But your system, what you're describing is right. Personally, I would go mega flow boiler pump system and um, every single shower gets a good pressure at it. I personally wouldn't go electric on a HMO uh, for another reason to maintenance. Um, you, 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 your electric showers are great, but they're unless you're treating the water and depending on where you are in the country, hard water will kill that shower fairly quickly, especially when it's used re regularly. Can I come in on that? Yeah, can, can I come in on that as well? I, I just like to say, yeah, I think I think a lot of people when they're starting out, there's an angel want to cut costs. Um, certainly, uh, I've got an eight bed HMO and we've got seven showers in there. And I know we put in a, a high strength boiler to such an extent, I, I'm told that all of them could run for 15 minutes nonstop and you still wouldn't run out of hot water. And that is one of the reasons why I think in three years we've had very few voids. Um, so, you know, because otherwise people get really hacked. I think it's something, Ross, that people get hacked off if, if water keeps running out. It's little things like that that drive them mad. In my experience of HMOs, and, and I'm an HMO landlord and I've worked in plenty of them, three things is Wi-Fi, is it warm enough, is it bright enough? And they're really, if you can get that right in an, an HMO, you're pretty much there. Obviously, they want it to be clean, but that goes without saying. Nobody wants to live in a dirty place. But those three things, if you've got good Wi-Fi, if you've got a good um, hot shower and the heating system's good, you'd be pretty good in a, your HMO. I think most people would be happy with that. Uh, Simon? Yeah, I'm sure Bronwyn's going to cover this in some shape or form. But I, I'm, I'm, this is in no way criticising what this particular person is doing. But HMOs in general, um, especially from a mortgage perspective, where you're looking at yields and profits and bits of odds, generally five bedrooms is the minimum. Six is preferable. And if you can get above six, which takes planning, the more rooms you get in a building, the better your rate of return. And the more justification there is for putting that mega, mega flow system into your building. On forums, just be careful to revisit numbers. 
reach out to Bronwyn to get some education on HMOs because four bedrooms is hard to make profitable for the long term, especially given the bumpy ride that we're going to have for mm. bills, um, you know, your utilities, etc. And if you were to get individually banded for council tax, you will very quickly see your profits completely wiped out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the only thing I'm going to add to that. Yeah, I'll just add that, you know, if you're putting en suites in, if you've got a downstairs bedroom, you're putting an en suite in there, which I have done. Um, don't get me wrong. Um, but if you needed to convert that property back to a single let, then uh, it's a bit weird having a bathroom in the sitting room. So <laughs> just uh, just be aware of that. If, you, if you're at all unsure what strategy you're going to have, then you might just want to think carefully about downstairs on suites you can have a perfectly acceptable downstairs bathroom which is shared so you might have two bedrooms downstairs for example and they can share a bathroom um, so houses of multiple occupation for those beginners who are with us is a shared household um, so individuals pay for the room that they rent and then they have a communal space communal kitchen communal lounge um, usually it's not self-contained. So um, it's quite a complex strategy. You really do need to know what you're doing. And I think some people are going, oh, four bedrooms, I don't need to have planning permission. So that's a good thing, isn't it? No, not really. <laughs> I think, you know, you've got to get economies of scale. Um, certainly down where I am in Hampshire, so Southampton and Portsmouth, it's not really worth my while creating an HMO if it's less than six bedrooms and I've gone between six and eight um, so yeah get some knowledge if you want a webinar on HMOs I'm happy to share that to anyone that emails me I will give you an overview as to what an HMO strategy is all about. Hopefully that video was useful for you but please do not stop there there are plenty of videos that I know that will help you build your wealth whilst reducing your tax liability and in this video well, this is the one I think you should be watching right now.